Hey, good morning, everyone. So I wouldn't say I was the first speaker. I'm just here to, to welcome you all, tell you a little bit about Penn State. Uh, happy to have you all here. Welcome to uh, sunny central Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, um, you know, I dragged my wife here from California um, about 20 years ago now, and, and she still hasn't gotten used to the winters, but she gets really antsy this time of year waiting for the sunshine. And I got, I got to tell you, I'm uh, in the same mode right now. But anyway, uh, we're busy enough that we hang out inside. I, I think this is great. This is the first uh, kickoff meeting for this uh, new center that's within our, our Materials Research Institute. Um, for those guests that don't know too much about the Materials Research Institute, it's Penn State's oldest uh, interdisciplinary institute. It has a, just a, a wealth of great stuff going on in there. There's, a uh, couple of fairly recent undertakings in addition to our more traditional uh, expertise in nanoscience and uh, the MRSIC that's focused on that. We have the uh, NSF funded 2D crystal consortium there. And I see uh, some of the folks that, that uh, put that um, work together are in the room. Uh, fantastic enterprise. We have Atomic, which is focused on uh, ultra thin, uh, atomic, atomically thin uh, coatings and so forth that um, just just a wealthy I mean it's an amazing building and there's some amazing science that goes on there I, I can tell you that uh, materials is an area that Penn State is really proud of we rank uh, among the nation's finest usually uh, you know uh, number one and number two according to the NSF herd rankings on research expenditures and we're just good at this so broadening out a little, just to tell you a little bit about the institution, uh, Penn State's founded 1855. It's uh, one of the land grant, one of the original land grant institutions. It's a big place. Uh, we have a number of campuses, obviously here at University Park, it's our flagship campus, but uh, we have uh, 24 sites all together across the entire Commonwealth. We educate at any given time about 100,000 students. Uh, we got in excess of 6,000 faculty, like 7,000 graduate students, uh, many colleges here at UP, and then uh, some of our, some of our uh, Commonwealth campuses are growing with enrollment succeeding 5,000. So uh, it's a big operation. We get a lot of kudos. We got the largest um, alumni society in the world, uh, wherever you go. I'm, it, it's nice to be a Penn State or wherever you go. If you say we are, there's somebody that'll shout back at you. If you if you wear a Penn State hat, you always uh, you always get some greetings because uh, we just put a lot of folks out there. Um, some things that we're particularly proud of: we were ranked by World News Report, uh, U.S. Report, World News uh, as number one for recruitment, and we have a lot of private industry here all the time. Uh, just within the last couple of weeks, I was meeting with some senior execs from uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper, um, as well as uh, Lockheed Martin. Uh, they're here to foster our research enterprise, but also they're after our undergrads. We just turn out some 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 really quality students out of the institution. Um, we're growing our entrepreneurial enterprise uh, on this campus uh, and in State College, the immediate area in general, in fact, uh, the State College community was ranked 10th in the nation for entrepreneurial activities. So we're really anxious to attract the private sector and, and work more closely with private industry. We've been uh, adding a number of new industry university collaborations to our portfolio over the last couple of years and we've been expanding the ones that we do have. Um, I, I see a great future in that regard. Um, about three years ago now, we changed our IP policy. We have the most industry-friendly IP policy in the country right now in terms of uh, big research one institutions where uh, when we partner with industry, when we when industry walks in the door, we will say any new IP that's coming out of that partnership, uh, you automatically own, and there's, there's no big argument about who owns it, providing that it's not already in route, uh, not something that Penn State has already done, and the investigators agree to that, which they all do, because our investigators just want to do the work. They're not worried about things that are uh, developing for industry so much. We get our 
patent profits and licensing returns and so forth off our federal awards and uh, don't want to argue with industry about, about who owns IP. So that's worked very well for us. Uh, we've attracted some new companies. Um, in fact, we just um, uh, related to materials, uh, many of you uh, know Morgan Advanced Materials, a UK-based major carbon-based uh, manufacturer. Uh, we just signed a major agreement with them. Morgan's building an R&D facility at our, at our research park uh, that hopefully will be opened, uh, certainly will be functional by this time next year, so that's real exciting. We would love to recruit more, uh, more industry here. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about this craft uh, center. I think that we have some real expertise here. Uh, it seems like a, a place where, you know, science should go, R&D, uh, the whole notion of smart materials, smart fibers, uh, new technologies in this domain, it seems like uh, right for the picking. So, uh, so I think uh, Malik and, uh, and Mauricio have uh, been wise in picking this, and I think Penn State's going to make a big contribution to this, and obviously all of you folks uh, can help in that regard. So, so I'm really happy to, to kick this off. I hope you guys have a, a great couple of days. Uh, some great ideas come out, of, come out of this fledgling conference and that uh, they really contribute to making this field grow. So, uh, so enjoy your stay and thanks a bunch. So I think it's, it's uh, our first uh, workshop. We hope this is not, is not the last. It's going to be the first of many. And the whole point and the, what we want here is really bring together two different communities Thank you. So I have to OK, now it works. Thank you very much. Uh, bringing together different communities, materials, and also uh, biomaterials, molecular biology. And this is how this uh, craft center started. So the Center for Research on Advanced Fiber Technologies. So let me tell you just a little bit. Malik will talk about, more about it. But this is something that we started just a few months ago. Uh, uh, and the whole idea is bring together different communities and start a new area of research. So we really want to play around with proteins, with other biomolecules, and try to merge them with the materials in order to make smart materials functional materials uh, that are um, with unprecedented properties. So the whole point here is really trying to bring together molecular biology, material sciences, computational sciences together. And that's one of the objectives of this center. And this is the first workshop uh, which is intended to work in that direction. So I would like to thank uh, Rene Lindenberg, who has been the one that uh, organized, helped us to organize the whole workshop. Rosemary Beadle also they are outside at the registration desk. So I think it's important because they, th thanks to them, we have this organization and this is this event happened. Uh, just let me tell you, and this is something that Malik will uh, talk more about it. But the whole thing is really trying, we're very good in making materials, we're very good also in molecular biology, other researchers. So, but we have to start talking about what are the real challenges, what, what things can be done together, and then we want materials that are programmable, uh, biocompatible, mechanically strong, optically, optically superior. And this is some of the uh, topics that we're going to see during this workshop. So we would like to thank our sponsors. So we have uh, uh, four sponsors, so Hearts, VF, Steelcase, and Ben Franklin. Uh, uh, so that are really, uh, we really thank them for this uh, support. And, uh, and some of them are here today. We have other, co other companies. So in total, we have around 65, 70 people registered to this workshop and uh, we have around 35, 40 people coming from outside and this is very good. So we have many companies also coming and joining and we would like to start interacting with them and this is something that Neil mentioned which is the, the IP policy at Penn State is very different from other places and uh, this is an advantage to have interactions, great interactions with industry and we're having those right now. So let me tell you some of the things that will be happening today. So we have 
our opening address, then uh, myself, Malik will just introduce the center, and then we have, we'll start with the speakers, and we have a, a, a break here, a coffee break, uh, we have lunch, and we have also laboratory uh, facility tours that will be organized, and you can contact uh, Rene uh, outside uh, after lunch. Then we, we reconvene at 2.30, and then we have another uh, se uh, free talks, and then we have these panel discussions, because we want to start discussing what are the real challenges and what is the next thing, what can we do together. Then we have uh, some breaks, some poster re reception uh, with some uh, drinks, so you have your tickets here, don't, don't lose them. You can have some free drinks, and then you have, we have dinner. So tomorrow morning is half a day, and this is what is happening tomorrow morning. We start at 8 o'clock, and we have a break, and then basically at 2.30, 2 uh, 2.20, we, we say goodbye and we wish you the best. Okay, just remember uh, that today at around 5.15, we have our poster session and the drinks, and uh, the whole idea of this workshop is really trying to, we have to listen, interact, discuss, collaborate, and please enjoy the workshop. Thank you very much. So now I introduce Malik, and he will give you a short view of the, of the Craft Center. Thanks. Craft Center, Center for Research on Advanced Fiber Technologies. Uh, it's named after uh, Mauricio, find this uh, interesting name. So it beautifully fits to what we want to do. We want to craft the next generation of materials and fibers and devices for textile and uh, other applications in uh, medicine, cosmetics, uh, you know, car industry, and so on. Uh, before I start, I want to thank to our uh, sponsors. These are uh, from Penn State, uh, Material uh, Research Institute, Hawk Institute of Life Sciences, College of Engineering, College of Sciences, and Engineering Science and Mechanics. And also, I would like to thank to uh, our sponsors, industry sponsors, VF Corporation, Hard Steelcase, the representatives are here. I encourage you to meet with them. And also the Ben Franklin, uh, um, uh, which uh, supported our workshop. The workshop is, uh, information is available on the website and the details are listed here. Uh, and the center has 22 faculty, uh, which is growing as we speak. Uh, so as Mauricio mentioned, this is a new center just formed uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, uh, to respond to the new initiative uh, of uh, advanced uh, fiber manufacturing institutes uh, based in Boston. And uh, we also um, you know, have uh, expertise in uh, different fields from uh, materials to uh, concussion to uh, understanding uh, fiber mechanical responses to uh, looking into application uh, of uh, different uh, um, uh, fiber and textile technologies. And the goal of the center is basically to bridge uh, academic research and industrial research. Uh, this is a slide that you can see uh, from, a, from a US government, which basically explains the phenomena very clearly. Uh, university research is basically uh, between so-called uh, technology readiness level, TRL, uh, level of one to four. And, uh, and uh, industrial research is typically eight to nine, where nine is really a product. So there's a gap that exists, and to address this uh, manufacturing gap, uh, so the, uh, the goal is uh, to form new institutes and new centers so that they can work at this interface and to bridge uh, industrial research to academic research. And uh, as we said earlier, the center is uh, unique in the sense that it bridges uh, three independent disciplines from computer science to materials, uh, to informatics, to molecular biology, uh, uh, to plant science, uh, to fiber science, and so on. One of the Penn State's strengths is in this area is uh, making fibers. So uh, as a 150-year-old institution, we have a very strong materials uh, institute here at Penn State, and uh, so we would like to take advantage of this uh, uh, materials uh, and fibers and devices 
and push it into the textile with our collaborators from uh, uh, in Pennsylvania and out of Pennsylvania, especially Drexel, Cornell, uh, um, UPenn, um, uh, Carnegie Mellon, uh, Case Western, uh, and, uh, and uh, other universities. Uh, we have the website. If you're interested to follow us, uh, the website was put together by uh, G uh, Jennifer McKean and Rene is now taking care of it. But uh, we will be following our discoveries and our new events in this center, in this website. So the goal of the uh, craft center is basically to develop advanced fibers between four to seven levels, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and to also couple with uh, educational initiatives um, so that we can develop the next uh, workforce uh, because uh, one of the key uh, points of, of this center is how can we take, educate our uh, young generation of uh, scientists and researchers and help industry to move forward in this uh, exciting area. And we would like to also do service uh, such as this one, uh, workshops and, and uh, conferences and uh, be part of the fiber, new fiber uh, uh, network initiative. And uh, I already showed you the list of faculty, but uh, we also have uh, you know, uh, companies uh, locally in Pennsylvania and also uh, you know, in the country, in the nation, uh, which is, uh, you know, as I said, some of them, the representatives are here, VF, Steelcase, uh, and uh, um, uh, Hards. Uh, and Sabic is here as well, and there's many other companies that are coming today. And we also have specifically two partner institutions that we are working together very closely. One of them is uh, uh, Drexel uh, with Genevieve Dion and Antonios, uh, Antonios Contos are here. Uh, and we also have uh, Carnegie Robotics that we are trying to work together to push some of these technologies. Uh, and uh, so now I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what uh, some of our faculty are doing. We focus this workshop specifically on uh, devices and its applications in uh, you know, uh, fibers and textiles, but uh, there are other faculty which are working in the center and have uh, very unique expertise, and I would like to go slowly uh, what they are doing. Uh, I start with mine, uh, obviously, so, uh, and uh, uh, we do uh, work on uh, protein-based fibers. Uh, we are interested in silk, uh, squid proteins, uh, and other uh, you know, uh, synthetic proteins that we would like to take uh, them uh, and make uh, longer yarns and then couple them with uh, um, uh, 2D materials, for example, which I'm going to give a talk uh, tomorrow afternoon, and then uh, uh, discover new properties, novel properties, based on uh, the sequence of the uh, proteins uh, that uh, turn into uh, molecular morphology and that uh, give us new properties and performances. And up to now, we have discovered that we can create optical cavities. We can make uh, fibers that are stronger than steel. We, uh, we also made uh, you know, self-healing textiles, which some of which I'm going to describe in my talk. Uh, and uh, Mauricio's work uh, uh, is uh, in the general area of carbon, and he focuses on making graphene-based uh, fibers that are very strong and highly stretchable. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he's going to talk about the, his research as well. And another interesting work is going to be presented to you by Srinivas Tadigarapa from Electrical Engineering at Penn State. He developed this uh, very, very small scale uh, temperature sensors, which are, uh, you know, uh, I was discussing with my, some of my industry colleagues yesterday, which could be used for, you know, uh, sensing body temperature, sensing, uh, you know, uh, environmental uh, conditions and so on. It can be embedded into textiles and so forth, and he's going to give a talk about this. Another unique characteristics and device that we are going to discuss, uh, and unfortunately, Doug Warner is not here. Uh, but his students are giving a poster. These are antennas that are small enough to communicate with cell phones. They are flexible, bendable. They are designed by uh, uh, meta surfaces, which basically can communicate at 2.4 gigahertz communication wavelength. And uh, this is a unique technology that Penn State have, which has uh, applications in different areas of textiles. 
Dr. Harry Alcock is not here today, I assume, uh, but his work is uh, uh, based on uh, uh, you know, uh, polymers that are fire resistant. This has been a work over the last 30 years which has uh, so many impacts and uh, I'm sure some of the fiber companies and researchers would be interested in his work regarding to uh, fire resistant and uh, biocompatible um, uh, polymers. Another interesting work by John Badding, uh, he's actually taking literally uh, a conventional tent and making it solar. So what he does is he takes it, uh, this um, uh, uh, surfaces, uh, textile surfaces like you know regular t-shirts and so forth, and he puts it into a high vacuum environment and then he coats them using different uh, you know, PNN doped uh, silicon so that you can make them uh, optically, uh, uh, optically transparent materials and, and optically active materials. So he has been working on an example at the bottom that you see is the different levels of amplification that uh, shows you the coating technique, which basically these molecules diffuse into the fibers and they form this uh, very interesting optical uh, fibers and devices. And uh, we have Chuck Bakers, he's here, uh, and he has been working on uh, uh, fiber reinforced uh, polymer composites. Uh, these have several applications from uh, car industry to uh, furniture industry. Uh, for example, Steelcase has interest in that. And uh, he has been working on making, changing the morphology, changing the structure of this fiber so that you can make stronger, uh, uh, lightweight uh, carbon-based materials. And uh, Reggie Hamilton, another uh, faculty member who is working on shape memory polymers. This could be used for uh, making next generation uh, uh, stimuli responsive uh, fibers and materials. And uh, uh, another faculty, Taxing Won, is interested in making super clean, uh, self cleaning uh, surfaces. And an example that he's, he's uh, the, in the photo, you can see him. He's trying to um, uh, pour a ketchup onto his uh, you know, uh, uh, left hand, and as you can see, it doesn't stick. These are surfaces that are engineered by him uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to self-clean and uh, response uh, by creating these micro-textured surfaces. Uh, we also have uh, interest in not only in conventional fibers, but also novel fibers that could be used in next generation uh, tissues or external organs. Uh, um, so these are uh, done by uh, Dr. Ibrahim Özbolat. He basically uh, prints uh, tissues uh, in 3D without scaffolds. So this is a new, renovate, uh, new and uh, a new direction that can open up uh, doors for us but for printing leather. Uh, synthetic leather or it could be used for uh, making uh, uh, external uh, tissues or internal uh, ones that can replace uh, you know uh, some of the uh, challenges uh, in the academy and in the industry. Uh, so also uh, Greg Ziegler uh, from agricultural departments we, uh, he has been working on electrospun based fibers uh, which have uh, so many applications including medical textiles for uh, 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 you know, stopping blood uh, um, uh, coagulations and uh, wound dressings and so forth. Um, and uh, Jeffrey Ketchmark, I'm not quite sure if he's here, uh, he's working on polysaccharides based uh, fibers and forms. He can tune these uh, fibers and forms to have different mechanical properties, have different responses. Uh, these uh, have uh, so many applications uh, in um, you know, medical uh, and as well as uh, uh, other industries. And we also have a faculty who has interest of converting some of the plant fibers into uh, you know, reusable uh, regular daily life fibers. And uh, to understand that we are also working uh, fundamentally, uh, Dr. Charles Ad Anderson is working from the fundamental understanding of plant fibers. On, also on the computational side, we are also trying to grow. Uh, I know uh, there are several talks uh, tomorrow and today on computational aspects of the fibers and materials. Uh, but one example is from Rubencraft. We are very interested in concussion research at Penn State. 
uh, not because of our uh, Penn State team, uh, football team, but we also have interest, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, military and uh, other institutions to understand the concussion research. And uh, that also comes uh, in collaboration with the textile uh, research as well. So we are trying to understand how impact can affect uh, uh, the, uh, m uh, you know, the concussion as well as how we can uh, mitigate these uh, responses uh, in real time. And uh, finally, which is actually going to be the next talk, uh, is Felicia Davis. Uh, David, uh, so she's working on design side of the textiles and she's one of the key players of the craft center and I'm going to uh, stop my talk here which she's going to give her uh, next talk. Thank you.